You are the only exception. I don't know why this is the exception. I feel like it's a different realm of reality. Let me try to justify this to myself. Am I a bad person? Hi hey everyone, it's Sunny. <laughs> this video is so random. But... Um, yeah, I decided spontaneously that I'm gonna sit down and do a February wrap up video, <laughs> um, which is pretty out of pocket because I like don't make consistent wrap up videos. I feel like I do them like really sporadically. Today is March third. My plan is that maybe, maybe this is not gonna work. <gasps> this video is gonna be late too. Like, imagine that I can edit this today and like upload it. What if I do that? Oh, I didn't turn on my light. Okay, well, you can barely see. Okay, the first book that I read this month was Wind Witch by Susan Dennard. This book actually took me forever to read for no reason. This is the second book in the Truth Witch series. I read the first book. The main reason that I picked up the second book is because there's like this slow burn couple. Literally nothing happens. Absolutely nothing happens in the first book, but I knew. I knew that part of my brain was tickling because I knew solely because of the chapters where this one couple was interacting with each other. And I feel like it was like, 15% of like the screen time in this book only for that reason did I enjoy this book But it took me a long time to read because I was just like bored because I didn't care as much about like all the other things I was happening. Um, but I love these two characters imagine like Daniel Sharman as the weeping monk from curse on Netflix Yeah, I mean they're not lovers yet But they're definitely enemies because he was like hunting her down But then it's like reluctant ally trope where now they like have to travel together and they end up learning like a little bit more about each other But still like nothing really has happened yet, which i'm eating up They're the only reason that I think that i'm gonna pick up like the next book It's giving like I hate everybody but you like i'm predicting it But it took me ages to read so I think I need to take a break before I like pick up the last book Yeah, i'm pretty sure I started this right at the beginning of february and then I finished it on february 9th So it took me nine days to read which is a pretty long time for me after that I read reminders of him by clean hoover and I blocked it. I think it's gonna go up after this video goes up. I finished this book on February 11th. I really 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 liked it I rated it four out of five stars. I feel like I've talked about this book to death Pretty sure I literally just put it into another book rec video and everyone's talking about it on booktube and bookstagram So I feel like I don't need to explain it that much, but it's like dual POV We follow a woman named Kenna who was just released from prison She goes back to her hometown and nobody knows that she's there All she wants to do is find the daughter that she had in prison But was immediately taken away from her. All she cares about is finding her daughter again Everyone else is like wanting to keep her away from her daughter because of the incident that that sent her to prison and then our second pov is a man named leisure he owns the bar and she walks into the bar like on her first night there and there's like an instant attraction between them but then they kind of figure out more secrets about each other and they actually are both tied to that incident it really keeps them apart it means that they can't be together um i did get emotional at the end because the epilogue kind of got me but it definitely is not as tragic as i thought that it would be like really prepared myself for a really really big twist in colleen hoover fashion that was just going to like turn everything around and it kind of never came Game. Like things kind of played out like a little bit predictably, but it was still really really good It made me feel Kenneth's pain like a lot and it made me feel Ledger's like inner turmoil He's just in a terrible position between a rock and a hard place. Let me tell you that I pictured him as Lucas Till so that really helped Sorry, I'm in love with Lucas Till. Um, okay, the next book that I read was The Distance Between Us by Casey West. I think that I was like really, it was, I, it was like February, you know, it was like giving into the propaganda that this is like the season of love. Oh, this is a book that I started and then I put down because I finished like another book in between and then I finished it because I think that I was about it at the beginning and then I got bored and then I started reading another book, but that book was kind of also flawed. Um, so then I just went back and I finished this book. Casey West is the author of one of my favorite like fluffy YA contemporaries, which is Boy Next Door. What is it called? What is that book called? I need to find it. It's definitely not called The Boy Next Door. It's called On the Fence. <laughs> Watch. I really enjoyed On the Fence, so I kind of wanted to give Casey West other book a try. Um, and so this one was appealing to me because it's like rich boy, poor girl relationship, and I don't know why I like that trope. I don't know. Please. I know. I know. Tomato. Tomato. Well, it's about a girl named Cayman and a boy named Xander. Xander's like filthy rich, and then Cayman is not. And her and her mom own like a doll shop, and so he comes into the shop one day. That's how they meet, and they start forming a relationship, and that's kind of what it is. It was like more cutesy and not as as much like conflict or angst um so i feel like that's why i got bored of it but i ended up still liking it like by the end what did i rate it i rated it three stars but that honestly has no meaning but yeah i read that the distance between us so then i picked up another book which is another clean hoover book because i just wanted to feel that addictive clean hoover writing again so i picked up one of her backlists called maybe someday um and this was disappointing i rated it three stars but that again has no meaning which is sad because it was very promising at the beginning and i think it was because i was picturing the main guy as charles gillespie aka luke from julie and the phantoms aka the best show of all time aka we all deserve justice for not having a season two of julie and the phantoms 
So what's that about? It's about a girl named Sydney and at the beginning of this book she finds out that her best friend and her boyfriend were sleeping together and she gets kicked out of her apartment. Um, her best friend is her roommate. She has nowhere to go and so she ends up crashing at like this apartment that's like across, like across, like not like in this apartment complex, the like across the street from her, which is this guy who would like go out at night and play the guitar and then she would go into her fire escape and like write song lyrics to it because she really likes music and he really likes music. Um, But they have never talked or anything like that. They just like always see each other when he goes to play guitar. But then after she figures out that her boyfriend has been sleeping with her roommate, it's like pouring rain, there's nowhere to go. And so she ends up crashing at his place. So it's like forest proximity. What's his name? Oh, his name's Ridge. It's Sydney and Ridge. And you follow their relationship form. I was about it at the beginning, but then I didn't like the fact that Ridge had a girlfriend and he was like doing stuff with Sydney. I don't love a homewrecker trope. I'm sorry. I know that they were like, you learn about why, I guess. But in my opinion, like it still was not okay. Ridge like never told Sydney that he even had a girlfriend until much later. And it was like this huge reveal and Sydney was really shocked and felt betrayed. And I honestly agree with her. Like Ridge should have told her that, I feel like. Like they were definitely like talking and like attracted to each other. I feel like it, when you're in a relationship, like it's inevitable that you might be attracted to other people. But you just like, you can't act on those feelings, right? Don't put yourself in the path of temptation. But he literally did that. He literally just like... I I know there was extenuating circumstances, but I feel like that was sus. I just, I didn't like it. I didn't like the sneaking around and they would like text each other secretly and like literally confess their feelings and they would say things like, oh, we can't do anything about it. But, like it just kept going and like, I just didn't like it. It just left the bad taste in my mouth. I didn't like Ridge. Like, after that, I kind of don't want to read like a lot of her backlist. Yeah. I'm still open to changing my mind though, if you guys have any. I just don't love a home record trope. It just never is good. Just tell them, like, there's just so much that could be. There's just so much that could be avoided by. Oh, uh, I just don't like it. I'm like, why? It's like such a cruel thing to do to someone. I don't know. It was just frustrating. I'm getting, like, riled up talking about it. Okay, so then after finishing Maybe Someday, which also took me a while to read because I just. I didn't like that relationship. And the next book that I read also took me a long time to read because I just. When I started reading this book is when things got really, really busy. Like, soups busy. Um, so I barely had time to read, like, at all during the day ever and then i'll just come home it'll be like 1am i'll like read a sentence and then go to sleep it'll be like you know this feeling it'll be like that while i was reading my book it was the bear and the nightingale by katherine arden this was like so random i don't know why i picked it up maybe it's because there was a lot of snow on the ground because this book takes place in like the dead of russian winter and it's like literally so cold i was actually getting frostbite while i was reading this book i really like this book actually the vibes of it is like nothing like i've read before it feels very like folk tale-y or like fairy tale-y we kind of follow like this one daughter of the family from before she was born all the way to when she's like an adult her name's Vasilia. I feel like it's easy to just explain what the synopsis says. Um, at the edge of the Russian wilderness, winter lasts most of the year and the snowdrifts grow taller than houses. But Vasilia doesn't mind. She spends the winter nights huddled around the embers of the fire with her beloved siblings listening to her nurse's fairy tales. Above all, she loves the chilling story of Frost, the blue-eyed winter demon who appears in the frigid night to claim unwary souls. After Vasilia's mother dies, her father goes to Moscow and brings home a new wife. And then that's kind of like the starting point about everything going bad after that. Like the new wife is sus and like everything just is terrible. Crops are feeling. And says as danger circles Vasilia must defy even the people she loves and call on dangerous gifts she has long concealed in order to protect her family from a threat that seems to have stepped from her nurse's most frightening tales and also Loki guys sorry 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 I kind of I'm a bad person my favorite part about this book kind of the relationship between her and the frost demon Listen, I know that I am like the first person to always talk about the fact that I hate relationships between mortals and immortals. You are the only exception. I don't know why this is the exception. I don't know why it's the exception. I think it's because it's like a different, I feel like it's a different realm of reality. Let me try to justify this to myself. Am I a bad person? Is that wrong with me? Everything else about this book was like good, like I said. But then, ooh, once she became an adult and then that freaking frost demon. What is he? He's not, he's not a frost demon. What is he? He's just a winter demon. I don't know why I'm saying that. I think it's because I actually have a crush on Jack Frost from Rise of the Guardian. But I'm so sorry, that Frost demon, that freaking winter demon, why is he so fine for no reason? Anyone who's read this book, you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, yeah, they're the reason that I would pick up the second book. Why is he so fine though? Why did she have to do that to me? That's all of the books. Oh, wait, wait, no, it's not. What am I talking about? That's all the books that I actually finished in February, but I had other books that I started and I DNF. I had started two books. I'm literally like actually halfway through both of these books. Okay, I'm not gonna call it a DNF because I might finish them. Written and read by Ann Bishop, Regan from Peru's Project. Saw her reading vlogs, reading this book. And she said slow burn romance and I said say less. So I picked up this book. Um, but this book is like really, really long. I think it also has to do with the fact that I was just busy. 
disease so it's hard for me to like get really immersed in it anyone's watched true blood it's kind of exactly like true blood humans and there's people called the others werewolves they're not called werewolves but like werewolves vampires like people like that and we follow our main character named meg and at the beginning of this book she's like running away from like this place that she was kept captive so you just follow her and you learn more about the world i said i wanted to read this for the slow bird romance and it's between her and the owner of this bookstore named simon he's kind of like a werewolf it's gonna be like grumpy sunshine hate to love but so far like it is really sober and like literally nothing has happened but i don't think that i was really vibing with their character I didn't sense a lot of chemistry between them. Um, the other book that I'm 48% of the way through is Good Girl Complex by L. Kennedy. I literally got this book and started reading it in the middle of one of my classes in person because I was so bored during class one time. It's again like rich core relationship and I don't know why I love that trope so much. And I'll, I started reading it and I actually really, really enjoyed what I had read so far because it's exactly like Outer Banks. Outer Banks is one of my favorite shows of all time. I love Outer Banks so much. Exactly giving me Outer Banks. Like the setting and everything. Like there are people who are like really, really, really affluent and if you're not one of those people then you're like pretty poor literally exactly like the pogues and the kooks from outer banks and this is exactly john b and sarah our main character's name is cooper i'm so sorry i can't get over the name cooper can't ignore how white frat boy that name is girl's name is is it mackenzie people call her mac cooper gets into a fight with mac's boyfriend and so cooper and his friends make like a bet to see if cooper can get Mac to get back at her boyfriend. I got kind of bored. I honestly forget where I ended off in the book. It was like fun at the beginning, but I feel like it could have been a little bit shorter because what even is happening right now? Like, I want to finish this book though because I still really love the setting a lot. And I'm like inserting John B and Sarah Cameron as the two main characters. I kind of feel like I might not be a fan of L. Kennedy's writing style at this point. I have heard like other people say that this book was kind of disappointing, especially people who loved off campus. Um, but anyway, yeah, those are the two books that I am halfway through and didn't finish in February. I might DNF them, I might not, I'm not too sure. Um, but yeah, those are all the books that I picked up. I guess that's all for my wrap-up. Um, let me know what you guys write in February. Yeah, I think that's gonna be all. Thank you so much for watching i will try to edit this and upload it as soon as possible so that i'm not too late to the bandwagon i'm actually so jealous of everyone else's videos also let me know if you guys would actually want wrap up like every month it would be horribly redundant though like, i feel like if you just come across a wrap up like it'll be like oh what was this person reading if people like watch my videos like regularly it would just become so redundant like the books that i'm reading and on that note if you guys would want tbr videos not that i would follow any of them um but if you guys would want tbr videos for any type of reason please let me know that as well but yeah that's gonna be all love you bye